Welcome back to the fourth and final part of our book club, Troublemaker by Leah Remini, Surviving Hollywood and Scientology. So without further ado, let's get into it and hopefully this one isn't as long as my last one. My last one I went over um, by quite a few minutes. I had to add some stuff out to make it um, not as long, but it was still lo the longest video out of all of the book club videos. So yeah, let's get right into it. We uh, had a storm this morning, which um, cooled the outside a lot. And it's nice, there's a breeze, that's why we're outside. Um, hopefully the mosquitoes are not outside. <laughs> hopefully not. But it's supposed to go back up the, the the heat so it's like we get a few days of nice cool temperature and then it goes back up to awful awful temperature <sighs> the ones that we don't the temperature we don't really like no okay so chapter 16 here we are we only have four chapters left that's all we have left we're almost done and it's really really good and it's just mind-boggling mind-boggling in 2012, that's the year the Hobie and I got married, six years into their marriage, Tom Cruise announced that he and Katie Holmes were getting a divorce. <laughs> that is the best decision she ever made. Yeah. Like, run. So Katie and her team of lawyers initiated the proceedings with her formal filing of divorce. Warmer started flying immediately to protect speculating that there would be an explosive showdown at over custody for Surrey and fears of revelations of secret facts about Tom's life. While Katie's team denied any of, of the rumors, the divorce was settled in less than two weeks and Katie ended up with primary custody. Tom seemed to acknowledge that Katie left because she wanted to protect Surrey from Scientology. It made me wonder rather protecting his church was more important to him than his own daughter. And I just saw a post on social media today that Suri just graduated high school and she's had no contact with her father. Like, it, it's, it's awful, you know? Um, but in a way, it's for her best interest so that she doesn't have contact with him, you know, because you don't want her to get influenced and get sucked in. Yeah. So Katie's action of filing for divorce in such a public way, it had quickly been picked up by the media, would definitely get her declared a su suppressive person by the church. It had always been my understanding that as a Scientologist, you have the right to request that any knowledge reports written by an SP be removed from your files. Because remember, she filed a few, which by the way, I don't think, I think she she probably got told to write those up um, against Leah. I, I do, yeah. And she never really apologized, or it doesn't say if she did. And if she did it, by now, since this book has come out, she should. Katie Holmes, you owe Leah an apology. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. um, in my opinion, <laughs> that is. Okay, so. I had been fighting for years to get the cruise wedding fallout expunged from my files. So as soon as I heard news of the divorce, I picked up the phone and called my auditor, Todd, and said, what do you have to say to me now? I guess you can expect to have that report taken out of your folder, he replied. We met shortly thereafter and Todd basically admitted that they had screwed up about moving me off my OT levels and onto the training track after speaking up about everything I had seen in Italy. Look, he said, you got some mad auditing the last time you were at FLAG. Putting you into training was not the right thing to do. And in fact, it was all wrong. Go back to FLAG and go back to auditing. This would, of course, be at my expense. Of course. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Now that my church seemingly had realized that they, that it had ducked, just replace the D with the F, um, up and was starting to apply LRH policies again. I wondered where were the apologies to me from everyone involved in the wedding debacle. 
After I reported on what I saw in Italy, I was made to feel like I was crazy and that I wasn't the only one to witness these things. Mm -hmm. Yep, 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 yep. Yeah, Norman Starkey was sent home early from Italy in disgrace. And guess who got divorced and remarried? Less than a year after the wedding, Jessica and Tommy, who were all over each other at the wedding, both took extensive leaves from the Sea Org and later wound up married to each other and divorcing their spouses. So, so did I get a plaque that said, you were right? Nope, I never got an answer about Shelly and Miss Cabbage whereabouts. I made up for the damage that they had accused me of doing. What about the damage they did to me? Well, if it was all wrong, are you going to give me back my money? Because as a Scientologist, when I'm reprehended and asked, uh, reprehended, I'm asked what I'm going to do to make up the damage. So now I'm asking you, what are you going to do to make up the damage? What do you mean, Todd said? Are you asking for a refund? Although the church publicly, publicly claims that it will simply return funds to anyone who is dissatisfied, the reality of this policy is quite different. In fact, requesting a return of money from the church is classified as a solitology high crime or suppressive act, which qualifies one to be declared a suppressive person. And in an even more bizarre twist, once the church declares you an SP, according to its policy, you are no longer eligible for a return of your money. Oh, shocker. <laughs> uh huh. It is the perfect catch 22. If you ask for your money back, you will be declared and thereby no longer qualified to get your money back. What a bunch of BS. Mm -hmm. No, I'm not asking for a refund, I responded. What I'm saying is, what does a church do to take responsibility for its actions? When I ducked up, I spent my hiatus from King of Queens in Florida in session 12 hours a day, having my ass handed to me. And so I want to know, what were people to, what were you people do when you duck up? What, okay, like, <laughs> And it's so I want to know what you people do when you duck up. That's a tongue twister of a sentence. Uh, eventually, after some time, Todd came back and said, it's done, and that I would get the 300000 credit to my account. I believed him. She did not believe him. <laughs> Never bothered to check my accounts. So why would I, too? Me, Todd's word was that of my church. Yeah. Todd went to encourage me to get on, get back onto my OT levels, but I decided that I wanted to continue pursuing, pursuing the odd, odder training path because I liked the idea of helping people, working with pre-clears and counseling them. With the church's seemingly and mission of having messed up the wedding fallout and its agreeing to return my money, I began to re-engage, dedicate myself in the weeks that followed to moving ahead in my training as an otter. But one thing still nagged at me, the fact that no one would tell me where Shelly Miss Cavage was. When I asked Todd during our session, he would take me outside where there was no recording devices and say, Shelly is a Sea Org member and you're asking about the leader's wife. How do you expect people to react? I can't call COB and ask him. When I flat out asked if she was dead, he responded, I'm sure she's not dead. But you and I are not in position to ask where the leader's wife is. I think it would be in your best interest to stop asking. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Suspicious. Mm -hmm. Yep. <laughs> in requesting my $300,000 back, I couldn't stop thinking about the fact that this kind of problem with money happened to me. An outspoken celebrity in the church. Similar things must be happening to so many others who suffered in silence. That just wasn't right. Having grown up psychologist, I knew firsthand the financial sacrifice that the church demands of its ordinary petitioners. I had met one man who said he was in foreclosure because of a sec check and a mom who told me she had drained her daughter's college fund after she was sent to fight. Isn't that awful? Oh my gosh. Like, on a more personal level, I had watched my whole family struggle to move up the bridge. 
they were $250,000 in debt at this point. The fact that people making average salaries of $50,000 a year somehow find a way to pay the $500,000 necessary to get on the OT levels, frankly, it's a su superhuman task. The level of dedication is astonishing and admirable, but over the long term, it means financial destruction for a lot of people and families. Yeah. Yeah, but they don't care. As long as they get the money, they don't care. And they're they're awful, like awful human beings, like just awful, awful human beings. Um, <laughs> when anyone arrives at Flag, one of the first places he or she is sent to is the IAS, International Association of Scientologists. It's one of the various wings in charge of getting donations out of parishioners. But the IAS is the 800-pound gorilla of extracting money from Scientologists for the church's monum monumentally important causes. Before you even had time to go to your hotel room, they looked up how much money you donated to the church. And it mainly start, started to question it. Do you really think you're going to get onto OTVI, um, I think, yeah. I, with this donation, no matter what you say about the state of your finances, the fundraisers of the IAS can always find a way for you to give more. They'll ask for your credit card number and its limit. Then they help, help, you call Visa or Amex and they know exactly what to say to get your limit up. They're not the ones sticking themselves a hole in debt, you know, they don't care. And once they help you get that 10000 or 25000 credit limit increase, you end up charging that amount to your credit card as a donation. Either you're an able being or not, able beings make major donations, and of course any good Scientologist is expected to be able. Like, that is just awful. Like, people are going into debt. Like, and it's not worth it. It's a bunch of poppycock. Like, it's just, oh, It just, it, it, it ticks you off, you know? It's just like, and they don't care, you know? No. Yeah. I wondered how many Scientologists with far fewer resources than I had were in debt to the church because they had spoken out about something they saw that wasn't right and were punished with a costly security check or a course of reprogramming. I also continued to wonder why parishioners had to pay for the same things over and over again. Why we had to keep pur purchasing new or revised textbook editions and CDs of the same policy slash courses we had already bought. Forced to repeat courses if we want to move up the bridge. Redo auditing actions over and over again. All at our expense. It's awful. Mm -hmm. Why didn't the church say, hey, we ducked up on that process, so we're going to have you do it again at our expense? Instead, there was no end to what was required of a parishioner. Yep. No one was willing to challenge his financial practices. Instead, just accepted them as the status quo. Even more infuriating was my original complaint that as parishioners, part, part, that parishioners, we had to make a financial and spiritual amends for our wrongs, but the leaders of our faith took no responsibility for anything ever. How could that be? Here was Tom Cruise being rewarded for being the most dedicated Scientologist on the planet, but you know who should actually get that reward? The guy who makes 75000 a year and donates 250000 Yeah, and Tom seems to get away with everything. Mm -hmm. Soon after my various conversation with Todd, I got a call from my handler, Shane, who worked for Todd on my service. You know what, Leah? I'm looking at things in her folder from over the years, and there have definitely been some issues in regards to your speaking up. Why don't I come over and I can help you write some standard requests for withdrawal reports? Apparently, the previous ones I had submitted to give, um, submit to have, um, Apparently, the previous ones I had submitted, submitted to have earlier knowledge reports on me from people like Katie Holmes pulled from my file had been rejected. 
and due to the fact that I showed too much emotion in the language I used. I had found out that the requests were essentially ignored for years. I agreed to meet with Shane and together we worked on the new request. As we were working, I once again broached the subject of Shelly. I told Shane that I found it surprising and concerning that I hadn't gotten a holiday card or a thank you note from her after I sent her a gift that past Christmas, something she'd always been diligent about in the past. It wasn't like her, Shane, like Todd responded with, I don't know, I can ask where the, I can't ask the leader's wife is. Why can't you? Like, <laughs> I figured as long as Shane was here trying to help me with a quest for a draw, why not have him help me try to get a letter to Shelly, which he agreed. I wrote the, I wrote, so, so, okay, so she writes a, a letter, um, just saying, oh, it's been some time since I've seen you, um, are you and, like, day not together, um, that kind of letter, um, I get that you might be busy or, or like on a project, um, but there for me when I needed you, I I don't take that lightly. Further, you always you were always in calm with us, so and I'm sure you can understand why, right? So that that kind of kind of letter, um, and like it's not like you to not write back, you know? Okay, that, so that that kind of letter, um, a week. Our cell passed, and I called Shane to see if he had been able to get the note to Shelly. If he'd gotten any response, he told me, Honestly, Leah, I never sent the note. It was inappropriate the way you referred to COB's relationship, he told me. So she had to write another one. Yeah. yeah. Once again, I received no response. A letter, I, I later received word back that my letter to her was considered um, entheta, um, oh, et uh, theta, meaning bad energy, sarcastic, angry, upsetting. It was basically thrown away. Um, by this point, Shelly had been missing for more than six years. And if you're missing that long, you're probably dead. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Right, a few more weeks passed, and I have yet to hear any response from the MAA, but the request for the knowledge report withdrawals that Shane and I had submitted. I asked Shane about it, then he responded with, let me check on it. When a request for a draw of a knowledge report is reviewed and accepted, formal paperwork or doc documentation accompany, uh, accompany the agreed upon withdrawal so that the partner knows the request has been granted. When I asked Shane to provide me with the formal paperwork, he insisted, um, sorry, he instead forwarded an official email from the MAA stating that the request had been accepted. I knew this wasn't on policy. I was getting the round around the run around and now I was starting to get pissed. I asked Shane for all full review of my accounting with the church as I had not received the three hundred thousand credit and I that I had a promise. Sean I'm oh, sorry, Shane. Yep, yep. Yeah. Alright, Henry came out and then went back in. <laughs> Um, Shane, in turn, accused me of asking for a refund. I once again told him, this is not a refund, this is a credit. A credit for all of the poop you guys have screwed up. When, you, when will you accept accountability? Okay. Um, and with that, I received a personal call from none other than COOP, David Miss Cavage, or yeah, Cavage, asking if we could meet. And then there are, there are more pictures. You have her, um stepsons and that's when she was pregnant with her daughter i'll show you a couple a couple more um and there is uh when she was on the talk and dance with the stars with tony who she remains really good friends with today and then the cover um Finally made the cover of the New, of the New York Post TV star quit Scientology. <laughs> Page six. <laughs> uh, okay, so I told him there was no point, but he insisted, offered, offering to clear out the celebrity center for me, Tom Cruise style. I declined, but agreed to see him that night so I could confront this issue once and for all. All right. Um, all right. So she meets him. And he has his longtime assistant there, Larice, who she saw at Tom and Katie's wedding. 
He immediately told me that he had been traveling and was not aware of what was going on with my situation. Yes. I repeated it, everything I had already said to others many, many times plus. I went to ask, why wasn't anyone seeing Tom Cruise the way I saw him? Why, with his three failed marriages and couch jumping attics, was he considered to be uh, the uh, 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 top, uh, 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 it's just a great Scientologist, is the word I can't pronounce. Uh, yeah. Why was he not treated as an SP who should be in session 24 hours a day? And why couldn't I get an answer as to where David's wife Shelly was? He told me that Shelly was okay and that he had to keep her away because SPs are constantly trying to have her, um, saponage? I don't know. I don't know. Another word I can't pronounce. It was, it was so out of left field that I didn't know how to respond. Like, why does Tom Cruise get special treatment? You know, why? Because he gives the big buck. So they want to make sure Mr. Cruise is happy, happy. Yeah. Like, that's, that's why. And that, that's not fair. Like, he's nobody special. Wow. Well, Alright, um... Alright, so he... He continued to say that he didn't know anything about the pro her problems. And that he would continue to look into... Into things. And she agreed to let him investigate further. And that he would get back, back to her. Um, I wasn't sure what I believed his offer to look into things. So frustrated with the constant round around, run around I was getting, I started making phone calls. I broke another one of the cardinal rules of Scientology and began reaching out to those who had been deemed suppressive persons. I knew I was yet again stepping outside the bounds of what was acceptable to my church. But given my recent experience, I couldn't help but wonder. What had happened to these people who had been very high up on org board to make them give up everything and everyone in their lives? I reached out to Mike Rinder, who had left the church in 2007. I was honest with him that I wasn't a big fan of his because um, the way he acted toward John Sweeney during the BBC documentary fiasco, a famous interview he gave to Dateline in which he bluntly lied to all of America when he said there was no policy of disconnection in psychology. But for the man who, had, who was head of OSA for 25 years, a Sea Org member for 40 years, and a psychologist for 50 years to leave, something must have happened to him. I listened to what he and another former top executive had said that psychology's management themselves included was continually subjected to and inflicted physical beatings on and sea org and un beatings on and other sea org members i question him how this could possibly be what about lrh policy what you don't understand is what we were backed up by policy mike said to me i was stunned oh sorry what you don't understand is that we were backed up by policy all right um i'm not sure if that came out right so i repeat it all right <laughs> There were seemingly some secret flag, secret, secret flag orders and dispatches that Mike said he had seen a permit hitting and abusing people if it is in the course of getting someone to comply with policy, which would have make it acceptable. According to several eyewitness accounts in the whole, okay, a set of trailers on Gold Base, International Base, a remote, a remote remote 500 acre compound in Southern California fallen executives are kept separate humiliated and then beaten often beaten Mike said that at the direction of and by the hand of David Miss Cabbage leaders of my church including Mike were subjected to punishments like being made to lick bathroom floors or being doused in cold water punishments that were so bad they felt like they had no other choice but to flee mike decided enough was enough choosing to leave the church and speak out as a result he lost contact with his son his daughter his wife of 30 plus years his mother his brother and sister and everyone else in his family 
how do they get away with that? Like, my assumption up to this point that terrible things like that was happening in the whole were were not an indictment of my church, but bad Scientologists misusing policy was wrong. Mike was saying that David Miscavige was beating people. He wasn't misguided. He was following LRH policy, which is what all good Scientologists are taught to do. That's why at the time I thought it was okay, he told me. Of course, Church, church of Scientology has always denied, and they always will deny, of course, that any of this is true. The church neighbor <laughs> the church said there's no hole no abuse no beatings at least not by david miscavige but then why were so many former executives leaving Scientology and telling consistent stories of abuse mm -hmm. oh. Oh. I also reached out to Debbie Cook, the woman who was the captain of the flag service organization, which meant she ran flag, which she did for 17 years. She had also been in the hole, but she wouldn't talk to me. The church was suing her for a violation of a contract after the famous New Year's Eve email that she wrote and decimated on December 31st, 2012. In it, she described herself as, a dedicate, as dedicated to the technology of Dianetics and Cytology and the works of LRH and I absolutely know it's worth fighting to keep it pure and unalterated but she went to say I do have some serious concerns those concerns can be summed up in two words David Miscavige there never was supposed to be a leader other than LRH she wrote the church charged that the email violated the terms of the agree of the agreement she made back in 2007 after spending seven weeks in the hole but as debbie testified in court after the abuse she experienced in the hole i would have signed that i would, I would have signed that i stabbed babies over and over again and, and i loved it cytology made the mistake of suing debbie cook and in a texas courtroom under oath she described the experience of the whole stating that she had watched David Miscavige punch people and that for 12 hours she was made to stand in a trash can with a sign that read Lesbo uh, hung around her neck. Yeah, and, and it's just awful. How could I have been blind to stories that the rest of the world knew? Scientologists are hardworking, dedicated, and caring people, misinformed people, and I was no exception. The reason for their blind faith lies in the core belief that they alone have the answers to um, ir 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 day? I don't know. Okay, I don't know. <laughs> people walking by. <laughs> Um, they have answers to, um, I don't know, the ills of humanity. Uh, what? Gee, please don't do that, you stupid squirrels. Oh my gosh. Two squirrels chasing each other. I, oh gosh. <laughs> I know, we are not paying attention if something cross cut, cut, catches you off guard. Oh. Go away. <laughs> oh my gosh. Um, during my crisis of faith, um, I did what most people do in similar circumstances. I relied to my friend. I yeah, relied to my friends. I mean, so I relied on, on my friends and family as a sounding board. Um, but when I brought up my discoveries of abuse with John and Belle Fruitis and my dear friends, former employee and closest cop. Confidence for the 25 years. I was surprised by reaction. Um, my, uh, I was surprised by reaction. By the reaction, my concerns el el elucidated. Elucidated. After confessing that I read Debbie Cook's email and tried to contact her, I asked them why no Scientologist would read it. 
why would I read a seat of um Valerie said how do you know about how do you know that it's a theta? You know, meaning like bad energy and like that. I asked because from somebody who's against our group. That's the guy. One of the guys. Yeah, I'm talking to you. So yeah. So once I opened myself up to the outside world, I heard so many terrible things. I learned what had happened to Sherry's brother, Steph, Stefan, years after he came to me for help, getting his wife, Tanja, back from Gold Base, where she was kept for two years. This is awful, too. This is awful. At one point, she was even put into isolation after she scaled an eight-foot wall, topped by razor wire, and jumped to freedom, only to be returned by Scientologists who found her walking along the highway. Stefan never gave up on getting Tanja back. Eventually, he came up with a plan that included sending her a Victoria's Secret box, which he knew the security guards wouldn't open because they wouldn't want to risk being caught going through lingerie, which would certainly be considered operated behavior. In the box, Tanja found a letter from Stefan and a cell phone so they could communicate. In 2006, seven years after they were, um, they were first separated, Stefan pulled up at Gold Base in a car, and in the middle of the night, Tanja jumped the wall again, and the pair drove off to freedom. Can you, can you, like, it's just, ugh. These are horrible people. They're horrible. Yeah. Not long after I spoke to John and Val, Shane called me into the celebrity center. But when I arrived at my course room, I found him standing with two men I had never heard um, of or met before. Shane introduced me. This is Mike Setter and... Um, Hansuli, Stolly, I don't know. They are ex executives from the church. <laughs> they were sent to talk, they were sent here to talk to you. The two of them I later found out were famously referred to as David Miscavige Hutch men. We wanted to sit and answer, sit down and answer any questions you might have, they said. Great, where's Shelly? Rather than answer my question, they responded by showing me some policies I had on hand. I quickly dismayed them. They then went on to say, We got a report that you're asking about Shelly and hooking up with Debbie Cooks of the world. Well, let me see the reports because uh, as per LRH policies you just showed me, I should have gotten a copy of the reports. Well, it was a verbal report. A verbal report. Why don't you show me the LRH policy that says that's okay? You can't because you know it's not a policy. They stared at me. I turned my attention to Shane. Shane, did you not know that I asked about Shelly? Did you not know that I was questioning what was going on? Shane nodded that he did. You're all acting like I'm hiding something that I've been asking about for years. What the duck kind of bat poop is this? <laughs> it's just so, it's so hard. Um, so Sutter and Stolly, the two Hutchmen, started in on a, on a presentation um, of the expansion of Scientology and all the buildings of the church had recently purchased, pointing to images of millions of dollars worth of Scientology's real estate holdings. That's where it's going, Leah. When you connect up with Deb, Debbie Cook or Mike Ryder, Shara said to me, you're cutting across the survival of mankind and depending what we're trying to do here. That's right. According to Sutter, just talking with it. SP means you're trying to destroy Scientology by proxy. And if Scientology is humanity's only hope for salvation, that's not. I was on for the, far from that. Uh, um, I was on the wrong side. Listen, guys, I really appreciate the 8th grade presentation. But I could give poop about buildings. They said, what I care about is myself, my family, the people who are getting ducked by a church that doesn't give poop about the truth, but rather buildings which represent not only millions of dollars but the millions of people who don't have that kind of money, but continue to remain dedicated and contribute. Yeah. As I went on and on, it was clear they had no idea what to do. They weren't prepared for this. 
I want answers as to why Tom Cruise seems to be running our church. I think he's an SP. I want answers on why we have to spend hours and hours in session for my, minor transgressions by you people, the avoidant of ethics and morals, don't have to take responsibility for anything. I mean, what the duck is going on here? I want answers about Shelly Miss, Miss Cabbage. Or, yeah, so if you have answers to where she is or anything else I'm talking about, no answers. They just acknowledge me like any other psychologist learns in intro introductory communication course. There were no human qual qualities to any of this. You're going to acknowledge me and I am, I am going to want to throw you out the window. I said, I don't know who you think you're talking to, but you're only acknowledging me, but you only acknowledging me is not the way you're going to handle me. If you want to handle me, come straight and come with some ducking answers. Other than that, we're done. And then I turned my attention to Shane. You honestly thought having these guys work on me would be a great idea? Well, it wasn't. And I... And as I asked before, I want a full accounting of all my finances within the church. How much money have I spent in total on Scientology? I honestly had no idea until that point. How much has my family spent? I want all of it. And with that, I walked out the door and left. Wow. Two days later, Shane and the commanding officers of the Celebrity Center, Dave Pettit, showed up at my house unannounced. Angelo answered the door, even though I said to him to not let them in because I knew this was going to amount to some that shit well you know you know you know that poop yeah uh, do you have answers as to where Shelly Miss Cabbage is I said today otherwise I'm going to slam the story in your face I do he replied so the four of us went into my office where David and Shane began taking out all the LRH policies from David's briefcase oh no I'm not going to read read policy I said you're refusing to read LRH policy, Shane said. Shane, I have read more policies than you. I'm higher than you on the bridge. I'm also higher trained. You're not going to school me in LRH, okay? So back to my original question, where's Shelly? I just need you to read this policy before we start, David said, sliding the paper across the table to me as if it was too much trouble for him to stand up and hand it to me. I stood up right back and stood up myself. Listen to me, Dave competed. You, this is why, you know, yeah, yeah, that's why I love her. <laughs> she, she, she's had it, and you know what, yeah, mm -hmm, yeah. <laughs> she's gonna let, let him have it. You can take this policy and shove it up your arse. Where's Shelly? She's at goal. Get her on the phone, I said. We don't have the number. You don't have the number, Shane? Really? You want to play games? I walked over to the phone in my computer. Okay, let's call Tom D. D. Fort. Maybe she, he has a number. Tom, a, fo a former C org officer who dealt in, in who dealt with David Miscavige, would have the number to gold. Leah, Leah, Shane said, "What is happening to you? You're playing games with me." I said, and then turned to Angel. You see what's going on here? Didn't they say they had answers about where Shelley was, and now he doesn't even know the number to gold? Then I turned to Shane and said, "If I didn't have, if I didn't get answers and apology and money, I'm owed. I'm going to call the cops and FBI. I know." You've known me to take empty threats in the past, but mark my words, Shane, this will happen. So I better get some ducking answers. Leah, 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 Shane continued. Angel interrupt him. Actually, stop. Just give her the answer you said. And, well, I mean, just give, yeah, just give her the answer you said you had. Where is Shelly? Leah, David said, ignore Angela. What, what's happening? Why are you talking to Debbie Cook? Why don't you take Tom? Why don't you make Tom Cruise disconnect from Nicole Kidman and Katie Holmes, both of whom you declare to be SPs? Everybody else in the world has to suffer and cut ties, but when it's Tom Cruise, your God, policy doesn't apply to him. Families are being destroyed every day by this, but not Tom Cruise, never Tom. So you're, you know, poop shit. You know, yeah, yeah well, it's like, <laughs> um, and the church is, yeah, you're a uh, ducking. Um, yeah, you know, uh, okay, so he called her something, and then Angela tells him to apologize to to her for calling her that, um, which, yeah, he, you know, he does. Um, shortly thereafter, I was called to meet with David and Miss Cabbage again. We talked about 
what I knew to be bad, my bad auditing of Flag, he was trying to justify what had happened to me and claimed that I was Jessica who was the one who sent a written communication on his behalf to get me handled. That Jessica had called the code red and on me, not him. Dave, it's, it's not just about me, it's about the whole thing. Families are being destroyed, people are in debt, OTs are leaving, highly trained auditors are leaving, something is not right. He asked me to give him names. Dave, come on. How about the next event you asked to see a, a show of hands from all the people who are in debt because of this church? He laughed as if I thought I was being ridiculous, but I wasn't kidding. My whole family is in financial ruin. I mean, it's happening every day. All right. Um, I know she talks about her concerns about Tom Cruise. Yeah. Tom needs to shut his duck in mouth and stop her perception of Scientology, I said. And then he just tried to, um, let me see, and then, oh, I was surprised when I got a call shortly thereafter from Larice informing me that after six long years of the 300000 due to me was finally going to, to be credited to my account. I in, I in turn asked for it to be provided to me in the form of check, which she agreed to. I had Angel pick up, pick it up at the celebrity center and it was deposited into my bank account. The church had finally done right by me, but my newly restored faith was quickly squashed when Susan Watson, the president of the celebrity center, called a week later and ordered me to come in right away with my mom and Angelo, the mother of the church, the woman who hugged me whenever I came in for auditing, who married Angela and me, who loved my daughter, who and now treated me like I was a criminal. As I walked through those doors, it was like all of a sudden this place where I'd spent most of my life um, on course, helping others, meet up the bridge, fundraising, catching up with friends, was no longer my home, my refuge, my sanctuary. I was taken upstairs to my former auditing room, another space in which I had spent countless hours and gone through all kinds of emotions and experiences, but waiting there for me was not my auditor, but MAAA, Julian Swatch, and Cassie Woodruff, Shane's wife, they were both glaring at me when I walked in. <laughs> All right, so, uh, okay, so, uh, okay, I was ready for it. It was at this point that Julian started showing me more than a dozen reports that my so-called friends had written up about me. I later learned that as a result of my association with SPs like Debbie Cook and Mike Ryder, and my speaking out against David Miscavige and Tom Cruise, Julian had to reach out to call all of my closest friends in the church and requested that they write knowledge reports on me regarding any disaffection toward the church that I might have expressed or anything negative I might have said about COB or any mentions I made about reaching out to SPs and squirrel groups. School groups are those who collectively practice Scientology beliefs and techniques independently of the Church of Scientology. He showed me a few examples of the knowledge reports my friends had written, including those from John and Val Futurus. Um, their reports pretty much just recapped what I had already said or expressed, including that after Tom and Kitty's wedding, I thought I was unjustly sec checked and investigated that I was talking to John about Sea Org members being held against a will on the whole and that I was continually asking people about she where Shelley was. Also that I read Debbie Cook's New Year's Eve email, they went out to reveal that I felt that too many people during the OT levels were completely broke and in debt and that I disagreed with all the money being spent on new buildings and designs as this was not what LR H would want and instead suggested that it should be spent getting people up the bridge and paying staff. <laughs> My, uh, Michelle Workman, a friend of 20 years, wrote about what I had revealed to her in my meetings with COB, though I thought that the, the denials coming from COB about and his knowledge of what was going on was poop shit. Well, you can't, you got, you know. <laughs> Um, and I might have said that Tom Cruise was an S SP and, and running the church. What's all this? I fired back. You tell me, Jul Julian said. What do you mean, tell you? The fact that other people, um, uh, we, oh my gosh, what are these words? We, um, we, 
regurgitated my own story and wrote it in a report. It's meaningless. I reported it myself. Are you crazy? They might have been crazy, but I was stupid. Despite everything that, that had happened over the past weeks, I still didn't think I was leaving Scientology. Even while making a stink about subjects that most Scientologists wouldn't dare address, while confronting the church's leader, who said to administer beatings, while personally declaring Tom Cruise a pillar of the community to, uh, to be an SP, and while facing down Julius Schwartz and the many reports of commendation, condomination and I still inevitably hope that someone would step up and prove me wrong. I pray that this belief system I had submitted as for most most of my family um, life was at best a waste of time what wasn't at best a waste of time and at worst evil yeah that's what it is. It's evil. Evil 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 Yeah. Alright, so um, she refused to bend. Um, I wasn't going to submit to more um, scrutiny. Uh, um, yeah, words, words are hard, especially when it's like after 7 o'clock at night. <laughs> um, more fines, more punishment when I wasn't the one who did anything wrong. I'm not going to do what I told Julian. Instead, for four weeks, I went every day reading every policy Julian wanted me to read. He wanted to break me, to have me recant what I said, to admit that I was wrong, to have done any investigating on my own, but I refused to acknowledge that. He also wanted to know which other celebrity partners were disaffected, a term psychologists use to describe someone who is no longer willing to support certain church initiatives. Again, I refused to tell him. Finally, he asked me who I considered my friends to be when I refused to include David Miscavige's name in the, f in the few names I had given. He tried to insist that, that I included. I told him what he was asking was off policy, policy as this was not my realization, but rather something they were trying to force upon me. Yeah. And then friends start to disconnect. Yeah. These type of exchanges became too heartbreaking for me. In response, I blocked everybody in the church from writing, texting, or calling me. Yeah. Julian continued to press me about doing a sex check and I continued to refuse and he ordered a sex checks for my mother and George which they agreed to and she told her that it was all because of her yeah It's just, it's so wrong. Okay, and that is, yeah, that's chapter 16. All right, she filed a missing report for Shelly. All right, chapter 17. But, um, and then I went through. Yeah. Um, because the Church of Scientology is known not only to pay big money off to off-duty LAPD officers who work as security at the Celebrity Center and its other locations, it also employs a practice known as safe pointing, meaning inviting members of various police and sheriff departments 
that surrounds churches to speak at events, pres presenting them with awards or donating money to their charities. So you never quite know who was in the tight with the church. Yeah, and she met with a detective um, when he worked security on the side of King and Queens, and they became fast friends. And she filled out the report with him. And he was aware of the risk of that he was taking. All right, so Kevin went directly to the head of his division, Deputy Chief Beatrice, um, and asked if he could handle my missing person report himself. But his boss ordered him to send the report on Shelley over to LAPD's missing persons unit. Despite Kevin's protest, he, the chief who didn't want to make waves, wouldn't budge on his original decision. Yeah. And then, um, and then he called to check the status of the port. And then someone from the unit has spoken to a church's lawyer who says Shelly was fine and didn't want to be found. And Kevin asked the detective if anyone has spoken to Shelly. No. Um, we spoke to the attorney, like, how about you speak to the person? That's just BS. Yeah. Yeah. Yep, yeah, and it was, it was case closed, you know. Later on, a friend of Shelley's explained to me on numerous occasions, Shelley told her that she believed that when you get to the top of cytology, you forgo your right to escape. Her friend was convinced that Shelley truly believed this, that same friend has been several high up people trying to leave, only to be tracked out and brought back to church. She thought that even if someone reached Shelley, she would not want to leave. Typically for the situation, she likely had been indoctrinated since early childhood to believe that whatever circumstances she finds herself in are her doing, that she is responsible for being sent away to live in isolation from her family for years and that only when she has resolved her own transgressions will all be well. Oh my gosh. Wow. <sighs> yeah. Yeah. And a lot of her so-called friends were, um, you know, not talking to each other too, of course. Um, yeah. That's just, it's awful. They just disconnect. Yeah. That's a nice breeze. Mm -hmm. So, most Scientologists are in the church because their hearts are in the right place, and they really believe they're helping the planet. That was certainly the case with, with Tom Cruise's longtime, assist, longtime assistant when she decided after more than a decade of working with the star that she wanted to move on to spend time with her husband and a newborn child. Who knows whether Tom complained about her leaving or the church decided on its own to put her through the ringer. Someone decided that she had done something wrong and she had to undergo a sex check that she says cost her so much that she lost her house. Instead of viewing this process surrounding her leaving her job as cruel and just as she felt a huge sense of accomplishment when she finished her sex check, she took pride in the fact that she left Tom in good standings with the church. I was once a big fan of Tom's before I got to know him. I'm sure many people could say the same thing about me or any other celebrity, but this is different. Most actors are not in charge of your faith. I don't doubt that Tom is in Scientology because he believes in it, but to me, he's simply been given too much power by the church and he has it's gone to his head yeah
Yeah. Tom didn't just use his position within the church to hold sway with parishioners who worked for him. He also flexed his muscles with fellow Scientology celebrities. Yeah. Tom Cruise was a more dedicated Scientologist than anyone else he knew. Well, yeah, there was seemingly nothing in church wouldn't do to keep its most dedicated Scientologists happy. Yeah. They were even said to be involved in finding him a girlfriend. Can you imagine? The unlucky girl, unlucky, that's for sure. Chosen after Tom Cruise broke up with Penelope Cruz was Nazim something. Naz, as her friends call her, was a beautiful, dark-haired actress. She was warm, approachable, and smart. She was also a college graduate, She was, which was unusual for a Scientologist. She had just graduated from the University of California. I was about to apply to medical school. Her mom had joined Scientology when Naz was, Naz was 17 and had moved quickly up the bridge. Um, we were both working on our OT levels when we became friends. We would find time to talk before courses or during breaks. Then in 2004, she disappeared. I wonder if Naz had gone back to her real life. Years later, I found out what happened to Naz during this time. She went under, she underwent a confidential mission for the church where she thought she was being prepared for a special humanitarian project, but ended up with the role of Tom's girlfriend. That's a role nobody wants. <laughs> mm -mm. Yeah. But she had a boyfriend, okay, and they pretty much broke the two of them up so she could be available for Tom. She refused at first. She kept refusing. And she still wasn't convinced. Um, and they even like showed her some transgressions of his that were against her, and that's what broke broke them up. So she was available, and the church did its homework on her, including background checks, all that. And and then of course she meets Tom. When she was all set up, of course. Cause they even asked, they even asked her, "What, what would your ideal day be?" <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, I love ice skating and sushi. And guess what they end up doing? Yeah. <laughs> uh huh. Yeah. But you meet Tom along the way. Yeah. Like how convenient. So after the wing process, Nas was in love. Yeah, but her joy was short-lived. She dated and lived with Tom for three months. The church appeared to be involved in all aspects of the relationship. She was chaperoned by Tommy and Jessica constantly, who asked Nas to report anything non optimum she observed in Tom so they could help him. Do you think he's happy? Who the heck cares? Like, <laughs> oh, no. Oh, uh, Yeah. Three months into to um, Naz and Tom's relationship, Jessica was summoned to a closed door meeting with Tom. Right after the meeting, Jessica told Naz to pack up a few things and go with her to Celebrity Center, where Naz was going to be staying for just a few days. She wasn't allowed to talk to Tom, she, he, who was just too busy. After his meeting, Jessica was not to be approached. Yeah. You just thought you, you've lost the certainty that you had when we first met, Jessica told her. This is what happens when you are separated and isolated from everyone you know and in love and told what to do in every aspect of your life, Naz said. If I'm a robot, it is because you turned me into one. Yeah. And of course, Tom and his lawyers denied that the church ever helped him find the girlfriend. Mm -hmm. Alright, so she wasn't allowed to talk to anyone. 
And one day, one day she saw a fellow actress and I smiled and I said hello. Um, but uh, um, her name was Marcel. Um, turned her back to us and walked off. And then of course, oh, all right, I have to wrap this up. <laughs> um, Naz asked her escort why she would do something like that, and the woman's response, why, why wouldn't she? You just got done scrubbing toilets. What makes you think you have anything to talk about with a successful psychologist like that? You have nothing in common. Like, awful. These are awful human beings, okay? They're just awful. Okay. So, um, yeah. All right, so um, Naz, she reached out to um, to Leah because uh, her and her mother love Scientology, and everyone they knew from it behind. Uh, but I was afraid that she was actually a double agent. She had never publicity publicly. Uh, publicly spoken out against Scientology, so I would meet her in person and if it was a public place. So since I left Scientology, um, it was a very emotional time for me and sometimes I seem to break down for no reason at all. And this is when she's talking about Dance of the Stars, okay, she was on Dance of the Stars, she had Tony, um, who of the Arab good friends and Shale Brooke was good to her, another friend. Um, do, you, do you know who did not want her to do dancing with the stars? Rest, rest in peace. Christy Alley. Christy Alley. Mm hmm. Yep. Yeah, um, Tony, who made some good friends, immediately started to defend me, which got him and Shell Brooke unfollowed and unfriended by Christy Alley, who actually tried to convince the W, I mean, sorry, DWTS producers not to have me on the show when she heard I was going to be a contestant. Come on. I, uh, yeah. So she did meet with with Nas and um, she found she finally found someone who was sympathetic to what she had been through and who understood. I held her because I, unlike most people, understood her pain and what they put her through. To explain it to someone outside a church would take months, and if you were to explain it to someone inside a church, they probably wouldn't care, wouldn't want to hear about it, and would most likely write you up. And I knowledge report for even discussing it. Nas have been man manipulated and lied to, all in an effort to keep Tom Cruise happy. Yeah, who knows whether Tom Cruise was aware of all, of all that was done to her, but for him to have dismissed her without saying goodbye or speaking directly to her deemed beyond cruel. Yeah, evil. Once I realized that about Scientology, I could no longer stay in it, and I never looked back. The big mistake I made, however, was in trying to change the system instead of changing myself. Yeah. In truth, I am lucky, unlike many others whose families whose families disowned them after they leave the church, my family chose to leave with me, despite the fact that the church did everything in its power to break us apart. As much as I like to say my family's leave of Scientology was out of pure love and solidarity for me, it, it wasn't just that. They were disillusioned with the church as well. My mother had been on OTV um, I don't know. I don't, I don't know. 
III for 25 years, meaning that she was required to audit herself six times a day, seven days a week, 365 days a year. Who the heck has that much time? Like, oh my gosh. Additionally, my mother was asked to do more and more sex checks, auditing and trips to flag, all of which, of course, were more and more money. And finally, she began to lose faith. Even someone like my mother, a woman who devoted her entire life and her family's life to Scientology, had a nagging feeling that she was going around in circles. But she had come so far and spent so much money to give up at that point would have been really depressing. I just want to get through it, she would say. I have been through it this long. I just want to get through it. And it ain't worth it. Mm -mm. Nope. So after I proved to her that everything I was saying of the church leadership was true, that they don't up apply policy and will do anything, including to lie, um, including lie to the parishioners to, who pay their bills to get their way, she was really done. I was done too. Yeah. But chapter 18, which I think we are almost done. So while those in the church knew why I left Scientology, those outside the church found out courtesy of the front page of the New York Times. Uh, sorry, New York Post. It was picked up by it was picked up by hundreds of news outlets around the world. The headline read the read actress Leah Remini quit Scientology after years of integrations. <laughs> yeah. Good for her. Kevin James called me and said, "How how is your family? Are you guys all intact? He said he was proud of me, that we were brave, and told me whatever I needed, he was there. Oh, love him. Yeah. Mm. So she, she did, you know, have friends outside of Scientology. All right, so Tony, her dancing partner, was being sur surveilled and followed by a car for two weeks. Uh, Maxim, I am not going to try to pronounce his last name, but if you watch Dance with the Stars, you know which one he is. Um, Christy's dance partner and friend from when she was on the show was given the cold shoulder by Christy when she found out that he had been at my house. Max didn't take it too hard. I'm Jewish, Max said. I don't really believe in science fiction, but but whatever. It's sad that it's sad that we've gone through so much together, and I feel like I've helped her, and this is where we're at now. But I think the world of her, and I wish her the best. Yeah. Christy also went on the Howard Stern show, where she said that I was very critical after leaving Scientology, that she made a completely um, dissing, generous comment. There's nothing going on, and they. And there was nothing going on for years, she said. I didn't shun her, but if a lot of people are rejecting you at some point, you got to ask, what am I doing? I mean, that's what I have asked myself. Yeah. <laughs> and Tony wasn't, her you know, dance partner wasn't really familiar with Church of Scientology, um, so she filled him in a little bit. And this is just like right after, you know, she just stopped the church. Okay. Um, okay, so. Okay, so you know how her and Jennifer Lopez were friends, and they're still pretty good friends today. She was nervous to tell Jennifer about um, about leaving the church because her father, Jennifer's father, is a Scientologist, and she thought that they would have her disconnect from her. 
Um, so she called her and she's, you know, she said she wanted to go over and talk, you know, and she, she has everything okay. Yeah, it's with the church. Church. So she arrives at Jennifer's house and she's waiting. Okay. I've never really been a fan of JLo. Like, I like her, but I'm like, not like a fan fan. But, um, the, the, the girl, you know, she gets a, quite a few gold stars. <laughs> Because upon my arrival at Jennifer's, she was waiting for me with my favorite coffee. It's a gold star. I started with, so the church has this policy, and I explained the dis disconnection to her. If you stay friends with me, your dad will have to choose between you and the church. And in more cases than not, people choose a church. So I'm telling you that I understand your choice to disconnect from me. Jennifer is a family girl 100% and although we are close, I assumed she would choose her family, which I respected and I was totally prepared for. Although I would have to mourn the loss of yet another friendship, I wouldn't want her to make any other decisions. As I sat there with my head down, tears swelling in my eyes, she said, that is the most ridiculous thing I have ever heard. I know Jen, but it's a policy of the church. She rolled her eyes and said, that's my dad. He would never. And you are my friend. I don't want to ever talk about this poop again. And with that, she offered me a chocolate chip cookie. Gold star. Gold star. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I am grateful to have Jennifer in my life. And while she may be known as J-Lo to most, at the same time, she is a person who continues to improve who she is as a mother, a daughter, a sister, a woman. Once people reach a certain level in this business, they stop trying, and my friend hasn't. And for that, I admire her, and I am most impressed. <laughs> yeah, Jen is open to different paths. She is one of the many things I love about her. She doesn't judge, and she is truly about self-love. She introduced me to therapy, and she helped me open up my mind to the idea that there is more than one way. Yeah. Yeah. So while it's been a little more than two years since I've left the organization, for the first time it's like I'm living a real and authentic life. Everything from sitting and enjoying a glass of wine with, with non scientologist girlfriends without secretly judging them as they speak about their lives and thinking Scientology could help them with that, to worrying that I am wasting my time finding enjoyment in my child or family when I should be on course or in session instead. I put so much time, energy, and resources into the church that I left little room for anything else yeah mm -hmm. people are surprised when they hear that i don't feel any anger toward my mother for getting us into Scientology in the first place she stood by me when it mattered the most after i left the church and I know she always had my best interests at heart. She didn't want her daughters growing up in a bad environment. She wanted more for us, and yet she didn't have any other options for getting us out of Brooklyn. My mom is fighting hardworking, but without resources or a safety net, and was the perfect candidate for Scientology. So she took us to flag on a leap of faith, believing in what she was doing, just as I believed in what I, I believe in what I'm doing now. Mm -hmm. And just as my mother fought for Nicole and me to have a better life, now I am looking up for my own daughter, and I'm very grateful that I that I never indoctrinated her in any way before I left the church. As long as I was a Scientologist, the church told me what to do and what not to do, and I was every aspect of my life. If I had any doubts about leaving my faith, they vanished when I thought of Sophia growing up with that same kind of dependency. Dependency. I didn't want her to grow up thinking her connection to the church was a measure of her success in life. I wanted her to be individual. Believe and faith are great, but very few people have been led astray by thinking for themselves. And the end, change is never easy. Living with a core set of beliefs that completely unravel, unravel is unsettling to say the least. We all have to decide, do we want to live in regret, suffer in pain, and deem... deem demonize our ourselves for believing and carrying out the, the tenets of the church or do what we <laughs> good thing I'm almost done <laughs> or do we want to look at what we gained the bad had to happen if it didn't it would be walk it would be walk it would still be walking around with blinders on we would still be walking with blinders on 
um, not seeing the world at large. We wouldn't have given the gift to explore new ideas. <laughs> Excuse me. New ways of being, thinking, open to all the possibilities that there are other beliefs, different paths that can bring us closer to others. We would not be able to be more solid than ever in our belief that what is true for you is true because you yourself have observed it to be true. Well, we have a newfound strength in what we will never again believe just because for most of my childhood and adult life, I thought I had the answers and most of the world was just lost. I, As I've grown, I've learned that I, I know almost nothing. And so in the feel reborn, in a sense, I am reading, I go to therapy, I do things that bring me joy, learning to love one person I didn't like very much myself. I am a combative and in, inquisitive, argumentative person. I will never allow anyone to change that. I still have anger, but I'm okay with that because it fuels me to continue to right any wrongs I may see. And it's because of that, that the support of my true friends and family, that I was able to fight my way out of psychology and see the world for the first time without judgment or pressing not to think the way I do or to have different faith. Our lives have begun, lessons have been learned, and we are healing, and it's never too late to begin again, better, stronger, more evolved. And to all my fellow troublemakers, I say, carry on. That's it. Not the dog, dog liked it. <laughs> anyway, this was really good. Uh, highly recommend, you know, I didn't read word to word, otherwise this would be like, you know, a three hour video. Um, but it, it was just really good. And Scientology is the worst of all cults. They are evil, awful human beings. And they need, they need Jesus. They need to change their ways. And they need Jesus ASAP. ASAP. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But I'm so glad she got out of it. And I am glad that she can live her life and not be on it and like ran up like people tile tilling like it's just awful like oh my god this is not how you live like oh anyways i hope you enjoyed that i wanted to do a video series um and yeah i really enjoyed this book um i think it's just right up there when i read matthew perry's i really loved matthew perry's book rest in peace um his book is really good too this is right up there with matthew perry it was just really good. This was really good. And I'm glad she wrote it. And I'm glad she got out. I am really glad. Alright, so that's it. Before it gets too long and goes like over like, you know, two hours. Um, thank you so much for joining me for our book club. Um, I'll see you guys in the next video. Take care, be blessed, and um, happy reading. And uh, yeah, Scientology sucks. <laughs> they they need help. They, they, they do. It's just, uh, it's just a lot of it. It's poppycock BS. And um, and they need to stop getting away with stuff, you know, they need to be brought down. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. I'll see you guys later. Ta-ta for now. Bye.